purity of iman is in the purity of the aqeedah. Meaning if your aqeedah is sound, then your iman is built upon a firm foundation, upon the aqeedah, sahiha, salafiyya. What is the criteria for us to recognize if our iman is sound and our hearts are pure? How do we distinguish between the true khashia of Allah and the waswasa of shaitan without falling into ghulu? The criteria to recognize if your iman is sound is first and foremost that your aqeedah is sound. If your aqeedah is sound because it agrees with the aqeedah salafiyya, salima, the belief and the creed of the salaf of this ummah, if it is in agreement and accords with the creed of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal and Al-Barbahari and Al-Bukhari and Ibn Taymiyyah and Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab and other than them, then that is a clear sign and a clear proof that your aqidah is sound as long as you affirm it and that you are upon that belief. As for the hearts, then the hearts is a different issue. If you are referring to Iman, then Iman can increase and decrease. So how do you know if it is pure? Then how we recognize whether our Iman is pure here, what you intend by that term and what is a better term, is how do you know that your Iman is strong? Purity of Iman is in the purity of the Aqeedah. Meaning if your Aqeedah is sound, then your Iman is built upon a firm foundation, upon the Aqeedah, Sahiha, Salafiyya. Now the issue is, how do I strengthen my Iman? How do you know that your deeds are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one? That there is ikhlas in your deeds, that you are doing them for Allah. Secondly, they are in accordance to the sunnah of Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mutaba'ah. Not upon bid'ah, not upon misguidance, not upon the ideas of the Sufis or the Quburis or the Mu'tazila or the Khawarij or Jamaat al-Tabligh and other than them. That your deeds are in accordance to the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as the Sahaba practiced. Those two issues, those will establish that your actions are correct. Now what do you do to strengthen the Iman? The more that you do, the stronger your Iman. The more that you make dhikr of Allah, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, the more that you read the book of Allah, the more that you make istighfar, the more that you make tawbah to Allah, all of this raises iman and your iman will become stronger. Then you have the outward action. So that is iman in terms of one's speech, recitation and dhikr and so on, enjoying the good and forbidding the evil with the tongue. Then there is the actions of the limbs. The more outward actions that you do, then the more that you will fear Allah, the more that you will have khashia of Allah, or in Allah, the more that you will be submissive to Allah, the more that you make sajda, the more that you call upon Allah, the more that you make dua, the more that you stand in the night prayer, the more that you give in sadaqah, the more that you visit your mother and father, the more that you do good for your mother and father, even if you get tired. Because that is the true measure. Anyone can do a good deed when they want to. It's, I'm in the mood. But now your mother or your father need you and you're tired. You're five miles away or you're in another city and your mother calls you. That's when you know the deeds that will strengthen your iman, that you will go out of your way to help others. Visiting the sick. Answering the call of the one who invites you. All of these are increases of iman that they make the iman strong. The more that you have twakkal in Allah, that you depend upon Allah. So when you become sick, the first person or the first thing that you do is that you call upon Allah. First thing that you do, oh Allah, cure me. Oh Allah, aid me. Oh Allah, you are the one who cures. You are the, you are a shafi. 
You are the one who heals, so heal me. So you trust in Allah. You trust in your Lord in all of the affairs. So you strive and you put your twakkal in Allah. You love Allah more than you love anything else, such that you will not give obedience to your beloved over obedience to Allah. Like a question that I received today. A sister whose family, it seems as though they are Shia. She's not. She found the sunnah, walillahi alhamd. And she's found a brother, or a brother has found her to marry. So her family said, you can marry him. But he must sign a bay'ah. A pledge to follow the teachings of this sect. So she said, is it allowed for him to sign it? But not really believe it. For what? For a woman? For a woman's hand in marriage, you're going to sign a pledge of allegiance to the Shia and the Imam. The Ali is the true Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then his, then his progeny, right into eternity, it said in the pledge. And you will pledge allegiance to the leader of this group, of this sect. So now, a person, how much love does he have for this woman? That he's going to sign this so he can marry her? Or will he stand his ground and say, I will not sign anything? No one is worth that. Disobedience to my Lord. Sign it so just so that I can marry this woman. Likewise, your fear of the one who tries to instill fear in you should not cause you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they threaten you with taking away your wealth or they threaten you with loss of job or they threaten you with a loss in career or trying to remove you from their land up until you give them a pledge. So out of fear that you will concede. No, my brothers and sisters, that is not a sign of strong iman. That is a sign that your iman is weak. So don't be deceived. Strengthen your iman through righteous actions and through the pure aqeedah. Barakallahu feekum.